Hello, welcome to chapter five, using masks within the ZBrush core. So now that we know how to navigate and we know how to use our sculpting brushes, let's take a look at how masking can help us in our sculpting process. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down our control key and notice that our brush icon switches from red circles to yellow circles. This is an indicator to you that we are selecting a mask brush right now. Notice that also it has a plus mask in the middle of the icon. Notice also over in our brush icon, we've switched to a mask pen. Now when I click on this icon, you'll notice that the only brushes I get are our masking brushes. When I let go of control, you can see we switch back to a sculpting brush. And when I click on this icon, I get all my sculpting brushes along with the masking brushes. But to pull up and use our masking brushes, we need to hold that control key. So let's go ahead and apply some masking to our surface and see what this does for us. So let's zoom in a little bit closer to the eyes. I'm gonna hold down that control key and now just apply my pen to the surface so we can start masking off. And let's apply a stroke from the head to the cheek. And you can see wherever the mask is, there is no sculptural detail being done to the surface. So this is similar to when we use masking in any 2D application where there's a mask applied, no paint or effects will happen. Now that we're in a 3D surface, we can use masking to help control where sculpting or painting can be applied to the surface. Let's take a look what else we can do with masking. So in our tool palette, we have a masking section. You'll see here there are several other buttons that we have, which are inverse, mask all, clear, blur mask, sharpen mask, grow mask, and our shrink mask. So when we click on these buttons, you can see that, for example, the inverse button inverses our mask on the model. Also notice that the shortcut for this is control I, or we can even use holding the control and tapping anywhere in the open document and the mask will inverse as well. We also are gonna to want to blur and sharpen our mask by either clicking on these buttons or we can use our shortcuts. So while we're holding the control key, just tapping on the mask, you can see blurs our mask. So now when I go and sculpt across this surface, you can see that it's not so harsh along the edging where the mask is compared to what it was when the mask was a lot sharper. So not only are we gonna to wanna to blur our mask, but we're also going to sharpen our mask. So while I'm holding Control and Alt, you'll see that the plus mask changes to minus mask, but this is gonna allow us to sharpen the mask. So while holding that Control and Alt key, I'm just tapping on the mask, and you can see that sharpens our mask, so now we have a harsh line again when we begin to sculpt. Again, holding control and tapping will blur. Holding control and alt together at the same time and tapping will sharpen our mask. Holding the control and alt key will also erase mask. So if I don't want any masking here anymore, holding control and alt, I can actually start to erase any portions of our mask. So think of that alt key as the alternate or opposite to masking when holding only the control key. The minute I hold down the Control and Alt key, now I'm doing the opposite, which is unmask. That's similar to when we're sculpting, just on the surface with our brush, is sculpting our surface up, holding the Alt key is pushing in our surface. So you can see the masking has that relationship as well with the Alt key. Now when we want to clear our mask, we can either hit our button here, the clear, or we can hold Control click and drag anywhere in the open document and you can see that our mask has now been cleared. Again, let's apply a mask. Tapping on the clear will clear our mask. Or if I bring that back with an undo, which is control Z, I can hold control, click and drag and that'll clear our mask. And that's the basics of using the masking within the ZBrush core. I look forward to seeing you in chapter six where we're gonna be taking a look at how we can hide portions of our model and show portions of our model for the benefit of sculpting. Thank you for watching and happy Z.